Open this meeting at 635. Um, public input? I don't see anyone, so that's no. Nope. Um, no student report until next month, or next meeting, right? Yes, okay. that's correct, Madam Chairman. All right, continued business. Um, the 2018-2019 school committee goals. Um, we had a discussion last time. Is there anything that has changed since then? Right. Um, with that, then I'll take a motion to accept the school committee's 2019-2018-19 um, school committee goals. I move, uh, Madam Chairwoman, I move to uh, that we vote to accept the 2018-2019 uh, school committee goals. Second. So I could just a comment. So, yes. if it, assuming they get adopted tonight, yeah. I'll, do you find the um, action plan kind of the timeline helpful? I can work on that for the next meeting to show you kind of some benchmark data like you have had in the past with people responsible for helping you to, to achieve those goals when we might seek to do that. Okay, yeah, I can, that, I can that work on that for the 24th. Then. Okay. All right. With uh, any other further comments or Nope. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. Um, and up for a second reading is how to get rid of a school committee member. <laughs> 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 Sorry, the removal of, if I could have <laughs> a motion to accept the second reading. I move to accept the second reading of the removal from office of a school committee member. Second. All right. Any questions, comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. <coughs> okay. We're on fire today. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> we'll be out of here by seven, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, would you like to present the? Next. It's kind of an opening day report in the year, so I'd be happy to, Madam Chairman. So I'm very happy to, to inform all of you, um, as well as the community, that we had a very, uh, very good opening to the new school year. I appreciate um, people being able to make our opening day meeting with staff. Those of you in the school committee, your presence is always appreciated, and I know it means a lot to the, to the staff that see you there, and it does to me as well. Um, we opened school on Wednesday. It was warm. It got even warmer on Thursday. Um, but we made it through those couple of tough days. Um, our elementary schools really were, were awfully warm. But um, the middle high school functioned well and, and, and uh, I think, you know, provided the level of comfort that we would expect from this building. But um, people did a really nice job. I'm very thankful to the principals and their staff for, um, for such a smooth opening. It was really very uneventful. Um, Michael has done a commendable job working with uh, with Rosalie McKillop in the um, in the business office on um, the bus busing, bus routes, bus transportation. There have been some issues, um, but I don't know that they're anything out of the norm. You know, it takes a few days for I think the bus drivers to you know. Sometimes we have new drivers. Um, we have routes uh, that that add stops to them, and so it takes a couple of days to navigate that. But I think each day we we've, we've seen some some improvement. We. Um, issued an email today to parents about some changes that we anticipate being able to make um, later this week based on feedback we've received from parents about the busing. Um, food services have done a commendable job. Our custodial staff, you know, as you all know, do a nice job keeping our buildings clean, and they certainly did yeoman's work to, um, to have our schools in the kind of condition that I, I think we've come to expect um, for opening day. So my, all reports are from my end. Um, of a very, very good opening, and just you know, it, it's important to, to for me to be able to publicly acknowledge all of the people that help make it work. Um, it's kind of interesting to be in a school on the first day of school and just see how the students just kind of roll right into it, and it's like business as usual. And um, so, all all indications from my end are that it was very good. Um, I provided to you traditionally um, kind of the opening day enrollment, and this is only the opening day enrollment. We will provide a more formal. Um, kind of the, the official October 1 enrollment um, at, you know, at a meeting following the October 1st deadline when we, that's kind of the use, the, the kind of the state issue deadline for official enrollments at our schools. Um, there's nothing tremendously out of the ordinary here that we might have expected in our, in our opening day enrollment, but um, 
you know, certainly we can, Michael and I can entertain any questions that you might have if yeah. you do have any. Um, I have just know that we will pre be presenting to you something more official in, in early October. I know it fluctuates a little bit, but I, I have a question. I, we're about 41 students below what the projection was for this year. And <clears throat> I guess it's basically what K1 and grade 9 are where the differences are, correct? That's correct, yeah. So. <clears throat> I guess my bigger concern is moving forward, and, and Michael and I were talking about this before the meeting started, we have these, we have some elementary school class sizes that are great, very small. Mm -hmm. um, in 99% of the cases, it's not feasible to eliminate a class and a, t a teacher and go down from three to two or four to three or whatever. Right. But I'm just curious about moving forward. Um, small classroom sizes are great, but it's, if you get to a point where you can cut, would that be, say we had, I don't know, we could do three of 20 rather than two, four of, six, whatever, whatever yes, it is. I understand the point, yeah. I, I guess I'm wondering if, if that's the direction we go in because small classes are great, but it's also more expensive to have mm -hmm. more classrooms and more teachers. So I don't know what the projections call for now given we're 40 below what we projected this year. So I was just curious moving forward. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think we'll, we'll see how the October 1 official enrollment um, comes in in a few weeks and see if there's any you know, changes. Typically there's, there's some slight changes in, um, to some of these preliminary numbers and then we'll, we'll plug that into the, um, to the projections and the, and the ratios and see, see what changes and how, how the three and five year and 10 year projections change and then we'll also look at some of the things we learned by some of those cohorts um, that did something a little bit different than what we maybe anticipated or what wasn't um, what we expected over the last at least the most recent trend the, the two to three year trend uh, and then and, and see where we're at but I think I think those projections when we see it in October will certainly to me I always look at that as kind of the kickoff of of budget in, a stand, in, in some aspects as it will kind of give us an idea of, of from a staffing perspective where things stand <coughs> or yeah. will stand. The 8th to ninth, what, the eighth to ninth was interesting. I, I first saw that and I was really concerned. I was like, wow, we're getting like 10, 11% of kids going to private schools again. Then I talked to Michael and, and I was shocked at, you know, what the real reason was. So Yeah, um, we had, I think, a, certainly a, an unusual number of families move. Right. I think it was 11. Yeah. yeah, I think it was 11, 11 families in the ninth grade that moved out of town, yeah. out of state in, right. in a number of cases. Yeah. And that's a little unusual. That's where most of the, that was more than 50% of the yeah. kids that yeah. That was a very, un that's that's very unusual for Ninth us. grade, yeah. And I would be willing to bet, too, you'll see that number fluctuate, as we will in other areas, too, but I wouldn't be surprised yeah. to see if, you know, the number at the high school up, I, up a little bit. I was reassured that, again, it was a very t small number going to private schools. It was very either small. they moved out of town or they're going to the Volk school, which is correct, which is good. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Mr. Webster, you know, in, what's interesting with elementary if you look at a class like the first grade and the fourth grade, they both have 177 students. There's eight sections of the fourth grade and 10 sections of the first grade. Right. Just because of how they're mm -hmm. broken up between the three different schools. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So it's literally the exact same number of mm -hmm. students. And in one of the grades, it's 10 sections. In the other, it's eight sections. Yeah, it's unfortunate because you... <clears throat> You can't move. You can move, you can move people around classrooms, but yep. you can't move them around schools. Correct. Right. Yeah, that's the only way to yeah. sort of I mean, reduce that class count. Correct. Yeah. Again, I, I I love that we're able to do this. I mean, I hear you on the budgetary constraints. I mean, I love that we're able to have class sizes that are small. My brother's a middle school teacher, and his main complaint this year is he's got a lot of special ed students, and he's got 27 to 30 kids in each class. Yeah. And so it was really struggling. Um, but that's my, my only question is, I know this is a breakdown of the elementary. How are we looking at the high school? Because I know in the past, that's really where we've, when we get to budget season, we end up seeing the number of classes that are, yeah. you know, more than 27 or whatever the, the cutoff is. I mean, do we see a little bit of relief at the elementary or at the, at the high, high school, school this year? I, my, my belief is you would see some relief. It's just it's too early to give you the breakdown of the class size. It's just with schedule changes and all. But yep. my suspicion is both with the additional position, the enrollment decline. Um, I think those two things alone will, will give us 
much needed and I think probably some substantial relief in some areas. I mean, again, yeah. when you, you know, we did lose those students out of grade nine, but you know, we, it's hard because similar to what you were just talking about, what we refer to as spot redistricting with the elementary schools and the high school, it's those students still take a class somewhere. So it's not like you can, they're all being reduced from a particular academic level in a particular grade. They're kind of across the board. But. I mean, overall, we're down more than 50 kids at the high school this year when we were last year. So Correct. there should be some relief, but still, my guess is we're gonna have more classes at 27 to 30 plus than we You may want. not have the 31s right. or the 29s, right. but yeah, that, yeah, I think we were at 812 last year, and yeah. I think this year we're 754, 754. today, so yeah. But some of that is we did have, I think since I've been here, the largest graduating class since 2003, yeah. so. Yeah. Um, that was, was this year's, that was this year's yeah. class, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah correct. The majority right. of it. So yeah. that's, that was expected that there would be a drop off just from the grade eight class coming into grade nine and the senior class moving on. So again, we'll have the, the kind of the more, what we refer to as the official, the October one data yeah. shortly after that deadline at, at one of your meetings. Right. And I think the October 29th meeting will be an official enrollment projection presentation. Any other questions for Mr. <coughs> um, Mike, would you walk us through the large capital yes. request? Yes. Um, in your packet this evening was um, a revised kind of large capital plan in the template <coughs> and format that we've been using over the last five years or so to guide uh, our large capital request. And I also have about a 10 to 15 minute PowerPoint presentation uh, that I'd like to kind of walk walk the committee through and a copy of that presentation was was included as well so I'm just going to take a moment and pull that up <coughs> so I'll try to move move through this um, but for for the agenda this evening um, we want to talk a little bit before we look at some of the revisions to the five-year plan and, and particularly focus on fiscal 20 next year's request. Um, just re as a refresher and to highlight what did get accomplished through the approved projects in FY19. Again, we'll talk about FY20 um, in more detail tonight, but we'll also discuss the future capital needs um, over the next three and five years. We'll review the CIPC timeline and, and, and their, their submittals that are due and, and, and go over that process so everyone's aware one, one more time. And then we will open it up for discussion and questions. Um, and the idea is that tonight will be kind of an introductory to the plan, allow some, some questions, and then um, kind of get into maybe a more deeper uh, discussion uh, at, the, at the next meeting. So in FY19, you may recall, we just received the one-to-one -one devices allotment of $60,000. Um, so we're happy that that was like the fourth consecutive year that that request was adopted. And um, as you know, we've been moving on, moving forward with the one-to-one the -one initiative at the seventh grade and, and that rollout. So here are some pictures of the, the, the Chromebooks coming in um, and the, the tech team over the summer working hard to set those up and then um, Dr. Daly and, and, Doc, and, and Dan Downs and so forth and um, their, their team um, meeting just these couple weeks ago before the, the opening of school with the seventh grade families and going through that process with them. Um, we also had the instructional technology equipment uh, approved this past year for the $45,000. Um, so we had included that in the plan for the first time last year as could have been every other year request. And that also helped add to um, the, the fleet of Chromebooks as well as helped replace some, some needed iPads. And we're also looking in the future to start this, the smart board replacements. So <coughs> there's some good photos of some of the work the tech team did over the summer. Um, the middle school gym floor of, um, actually, I'm sorry, actually, I believe it actually was $40,000 allotment. And here are some pictures um, highlighted here. So it came out very, very nice. I think everyone is very, very pleased with the condition of the new floor. The, the schedule went, went seamless over the summer. Um, and it just looks great. And it's just a great addition to that school. Um, and then the final uh, appropriation and 
request that was approved was the multifunction activity vehicle. Um, that was an allotment of $30,000. And we did order that vehicle through, off the state contract. Here's a pictures of what that vehicle will look like. It's currently in, in build and, be, and we are anticipating on receiving that vehicle. Uh, we hope sometime before the holidays in December to put that to, to use. But certainly, um, you know, we're very grateful for the, the support of these of these <coughs> projects. Um, just a refresher, we, we have three major categories that we look at our, our five-year capital plan. Um, we have our vehicle needs, we have a, you know, our fleet of vehicles, technology requests, our facilities requests and building grounds needs. And uh, what qualifies a request for a large capital? As a reminder, it's a, it's a total project or unit cost greater than $25,000, as well as something that would have a useful life of five years or more. So anything that does not meet that criteria would need to be funded through the operating budget through a small capital request. So before I get into some of the, re the requests for FY20, fiscal year 20, here's kind of a three-year snapshot um, of, our, of our capital plan and requests that are in front of you this evening. Um, there's a couple of vehicles over the next two years in need, in need of replacement. Um, the technology plan that has remained consistent over the last five years, the, the one-to-one -one devices and that allotment of $60,000 to make that happen and then adding the $45,000 of instructional technology equipment every other year. And then the facilities, um, so the largest need um, is on the facilities standpoint and, and all those needs are certainly geared towards the elementary, the elementary schools. But uh, we will be looking at you know, request for fiscal year 20 of a little over about $335,000. Uh, but over the next, really the next three years, we do have needs um, and we do have requests that we want to get funded and it's a little over $1.2 million uh, sort of ask at this point over the next three years. So we'll come back to this <coughs> the presentation. So I'm going to start with technology and um, a very important uh, need that we need to uh, Continue to request as part of the plan. It's been on there for a number of years. And what I just spoke of is the is the one to one computer devices. Um, fiscal year twenty would represent year three of this program, where we um, provide each uh, grade, seventh grader with a Chromebook. Uh, but this is certainly a very important part of our curriculum at this point, and, and it's certainly been been our number one priority in terms of large capital requests. So we want to certainly continue this, this program, and this, this request is very much needed for, in order to allow us to do that, to meet our digital learning goals, and to meet the state testing requirements as well. Uh, I talked a little bit about the uh, $45,000, so we were very grateful that that amount was funded um, this past fiscal year in 2019. Those funds were put to great use this past summer. Uh, most of the principals for this year one of this program chose to uh, add some of the elementary school principals to their, Chrome, their fleet of Chromebooks. The little school needed to replace a set of iPad, uh, iPads that were used at the primary grades that were in very much need of replacement. Um, so we looked to add, this, is, this was a chart that was put together a year ago and we feel if you, we were to do everything at once, uh, we would need almost $200,000, a little bit greater than $200,000. So we received the first allotment of $45,000 in fiscal 19, and just we want to kind of continue the effort to, to replace <coughs> these instructional technology devices. And again, it it's, could be Chromebook carts, it could be iP iPad carts, and it could be the instructional um, you know, smart boards that are um, used at the elementary level. So this would be a fiscal year 21 request. We would, we're looking to do this every other year, so this would not be a request for next year, but for two years out. Um, we look at our vehicles. Uh, the most, the highest priority vehicle that's included in the plan for fiscal 20 next year is the replacement of the 2007 special education van. This is the oldest van in our fleet of vehicles. We, we currently operate a fleet of four special education vans. Um, three have been replaced within the last five years. <coughs> and the 2007 van is the kind of the last and the oldest of that fleet that has not been replaced for a number of years. This vehicle has over 220,000 miles on it. It's used as a spare, um, but it, that being said, it is still a very important part of the fleet and of the, the special education program that we use in-house to, to transport students daily. 
It does get very frequent use um, when other vans are either being serviced or, or out for a variety of reasons. It's also used for a number of times in the athletic and extracurricular area. Um, and the plan would be to replace this vehicle and then transfer it to the food service department who actually has a 2005 vehicle, which even is two years older, that that vehicle is a low, lower usage vehicle. And we feel like if we could extend the life of it, if we were able to replace and transfer it to the food service department, that 2005 food service van would be the van that would come offline. Future vehicle requests, uh, this is in the building grounds department. We certainly maintain some equipment in the building grounds department and a couple of vehicles. Um, this is certainly a very much a high usage vehicle. Um, it's used for snow removal and plowing and sanding in the winter months. And um, you know, we, we feel it's, it may only have 45,000 know, miles, <coughs> but it's still 21. This vehicle would be um, you know, 10, 10 years old, and we just feel like it's gotten the, the maintenance and the ongoing repairs to keep it running is is getting to a point where it's becoming expensive annually, and we think we need to consider for replacement over the, within the next two years. So it is on the plan for fiscal year 21. So then when I, when I turn to facilities, which is the final um, you know, category of our replacement, I just, before I start to get into <coughs> the fiscal 20 request, I wanted to just kind of snapshot, because obviously we're in a brand new middle school and high school building, the majority of our facility needs are, are clearly located at the elementary level over the next five years. And when we look at three elementary schools, these are really uh, the requests that are part of the plan, part of the five-year plan, um, certainly school security enhancements. And because of the good work that the, the members of this school committee did and Superintendent Bernard with uh, State Representative Brad Jones, the funding of a lot of the school security enhancements is actually not part of the plan because we're getting a special Airmark state grant uh, in the amount of $175,000 to make these school security enhan enhancements happen uh, th this year. So that is across the entire district, including this building and in some cases, but um, the work of that, receiving that grant has allowed us to kind of not ask for that as part of this process, which allows us to then shift some of that request to other areas that we are certainly in, in need of. Um, there's an electronic systems upgrades, which we'll hear about. It's replacing some of the, the fire alarm systems, the burglar alarm systems, as well as some of the, the paging and intercom systems and so forth. Um, but there's certainly some, some high, highly expensive big ticket items on this list that we need to consider in the outer years that you'll I'll, I'll reference at the end of the presentation. Uh, we did some analysis of the hood roofs. We need to consider some, some roof restoration at the, the hood. That, that roof is getting uh, to be over 20 years old. The, the hood school boilers, which have been on the plan for a number of years, um, as well as the <coughs> modular units at the little school. There's an there's a, um, extended modular unit at the little school that houses the early childhood classroom, and um, we certainly need to have, be mindful of that unit coming to the end of its useful life in, over the next five years. Um, so fiscal 20, so it really became an exercise of what are our priorities um, of all the items on that list, and then an effort to sort of balance the, the funding over the next three, four, and five years to try not to have such a large ask in any given year for the town to support. So that was kind of the exercise we went through it as an administrative team in putting together the, the five-year plan this year. And one of the, of the high priority projects of for facilities was the little school paving project. You may recall this came very close to getting funded a year ago, fell just short. The CIPC has kind of made a commitment that they would look to make this project a, a priority in fiscal 20. So we have re-looked at this project a little bit over the summer. We have decided to um, to up our amount slightly so we can kind of do it all in one in one um, you know one swoop or one year, make it uh, a little bit more smoother, efficient project. That seemed to be the way the CIPC was, was going last year when we presented the plan. Um, but we feel for the $85,000 request, we would be able to repave the majority of the main lot here, shown in photo two, 
as well as um, pave the old playground area, um, which is this kind of gravel area that was put down as a temporary solution when the old playground was removed. Um, and we, we feel by doing that, um, we would be able to actually expand and capture an additional 10 to 12 parking spaces, much needed parking spaces there as well. If you look at this chart, uh, which was what we actually put together last year and provided to the CIPC when we were presenting and advocating for this request. Um, we feel the blue is, is the top priority, and based on the square footage and the proposals we've received, we have received from the town's paving contractor, um, that blue, which would include the old playground area, co would cost $65,000. Um, the amount we would like to add to that would be this front um, it's kind of bus loop, which is highlighted in orange, um, as well as, you know, address you know, some of the curbing and, and so forth in this area. And we feel like if we were not to do this in phases, but try to do this as one request all in one year for the $85,000 amount, it would be much more seamless and, and efficient to do so. So. So the old playground area is in this, um, yeah, it's on the top left of the blue. Yeah. So it's, always, it's on the top left of the blue, of the blue area. Okay. So that would be repaved, and then we would actually would capture additional parking spaces in that area. That adds up to almost a hundred thousand dollars. No. It's yeah. So we're only the blue and the orange is is the request. Oh, so you're not going to do the purple. So we wouldn't do. We we quoted out the the pink or the purple. Uh, as well as the yellow, uh, which is Barberry Road, which the CIPC felt last year that's the town responsibility and they would want to coordinate that, but they didn't feel like it was the school's responsibility to pave part of Barberry Road. So the requests would include the high priority areas, which would be the blue and the, and the shaded in orange, which is that front loop, as well as any curbing that is in that area as well. What's that, the condition of the back section? That is, it's in better shape, and it's not highly used. Oh. Um, so that's, it's in definitely in, in better shape than certainly the blue, the blue section, which right. is the, the high, yeah. high need area. Would, would the goal still be to have a, potentially have a second drop off area as well? We would look at that as part of the project if funded, <coughs> correct, as we would hope to, have, hope to do last year. Yeah, I mean, I think overall the parking, because if you look at it, it's like a little section here, a little section, there's no, yeah. right. there's no cohesiveness yeah. to any so other. We would try to redesign that flow, yeah. that traffic flow as well. And do we know if the town has the Bar Barbary Street on its list of, of, you know, relatively soon to be yeah, we, paved? Yeah, it wasn't, uh, my recollection of last year is it wasn't on that list for this year, so we would, we would certainly advocate for that, and the CIPC is aware of that, and yeah. um, when they, we, we do hear their road program, it would be part of the, the conversation. It obviously makes sense. Yeah. So that is the little school paving project. Um, the lighting upgrades from the Little and the Hood schools, we talked, we had this on the plan last year, we felt, we certainly continue to feel that LED lighting, um, you know, projects certainly at the Little and the Hood, um, and some of the, the main common areas, the gymnasium, the cafeteria, main hallways, the library, and replacing these fixtures with LED lighting would not only significantly reduce our energy consumption and allow us to save in reduction of electricity costs, um, but we also feel like it would give just a nice, you know, brighter, brighter look to, to many of these, these common areas that are highly, highly utilized. Uh, we also would anticipate that we would um, potentially receive and we would try to partner with RMLD um, and it could result in as much as, a, you know, 25 to 50 percent of the cost of this project in the form of an, an RMLD rebate by, by working with the parameters of their rebate program. And we've been in conversations with them to make sure that that would happen. Yes. So I saw in a lot of the notes you talked about the different rebates. I assume the number that you're giving is before any rebate. That's correct. correct. Okay. So we would have to fund it and, and purchase the light fixtures as a certain type of light fixture that would fits into their program. And then once the project is, is installed and fully up and running, <laughs> Um, they would come out, do some analysis, look at some energy consumption numbers, and if it fits into their parameters and they feel like it would, we'd work closely with them, there'd be rebates that would happen um, that would come into the town um, you know, after the project is complete. And I would say anecdotally that uh, we did a similar project in my office where we replaced old 
fluorescent yes. uh, tubes with uh, LED lighting, the typical two by four uh, light panels, and it, yep. the quality of the light made a big difference. Yeah, so I think it's the quality, it's the energy yeah. consumption yeah, savings, just energy it's consumption, electricity it's, it's reductions. Light, yeah. <laughs> I think yeah, it would give the the school certainly a nice a nice bright brighter feel in these common areas certainly. And then I think the idea was be if it's successful and it goes well and we work with RMLD to do this, we would look at other areas as well and just continue with this program. Um, request number three for fiscal year 20 on, in under facilities was, this is sort of a new request, but um, in working with Mr. Hardacre over the summer months um, and going back to some of the, the, the challenges that we've typically seen at the Little Elementary School in particular in certain wings of the building, uh, we did have a company, BLW Engineers, come out and perform an assessment um, in 2017, and even the, we visited that assessment this past summer. Um, and they provided a recommended solution that would help eliminate some of that struggles that the school has had to properly heat and balance the heat, uh, in particular in the older part of the school, which is the C wing. Um, so the project, the recommendation based on the, the engineer's uh, assessment in rec was to replace the unit ventilated with a low limit discharge control mechanism that had an estimated cost of about $45,000 and the second request was to re actually a, a, just a rebalancing of the C-wing C unit ventilators which certainly it's, so it's not inexpensive but that estimated cost of $20,000 but we do feel um, this project would make a significant improvement to the, the you know, in, in particular the heating of, of that, that C-wing which has been an, an ongoing challenge at the school. Is rebalancing a, uh, um, a involved materials? I, th I, I don't know much about it, but I thought rebalancing was more of a adjustment kind of process. Yeah, I think, I believe their assessment, it could involve some replacement of some of the, sure. you know, the mechanisms Different within the unit, events, the ventilator, yeah. So I think it was a little bit, it was labor as well as some materials. Um, the final request um, was, we felt was pertinent for consideration in fiscal year 20 was what we're referring to as electronic system upgrades um, at the elementary schools. Uh, we, we felt it was made sense to, to do this in two phases. This has, approach has been on the plan in the past. Um, but when the alarm company came out in particular to inspect and um, the systems in particular at the hood and the little schools this past summer who are the older schools with the older fire alarm and burglar alarm systems um, we feel like we're getting they're getting to the end of their useful life and we we have some proposals um, from the american alarm company that would address some of the issues um, and replace in predominantly that some of these systems at the hood and the little schools but we just feel like they're not going to last uh, forever and um, the idea is that phase one, the fiscal year 20, we would focus on these most pertinent you know, your fire alarm, you know, burglar alarm systems and panels at these schools. Um, you know, $30,000 would achieve that. And then a continuation of, of all systems would be consideration, but less of a priority would be the paging, the intercom, the bell systems, the wireless clock systems, you know, upgrading those systems to more modern systems allowing for greater uniformity and consistency across all, all three schools. We do have proposals from a couple of companies that would allow us to achieve that, and that's considered um, in fiscal year 21 right now as part of our capital plan. But the, we felt this $30,000, which is the fire alarm systems at these schools, um, based on some proposals um, and the assessments that were done this summer, is, is warranted. So when we look, that was fiscal year 20. So then we look at some of the future plans for consideration on the plan, um, you know, things we didn't focus heavily on, but things that are, are certainly of need, is we continue to have the Hood School Modular Demolition Project for consideration, you know, a couple years out. So we continue to assess the, the Hood School mods, and we're trying to get as, as many years, certainly out of those as they can. They're safe, they're structurally sound, but we still feel like the need, that needs to be on the plan for consideration. The phase two of that um, upgrade of the systems, as, as I just spoke of, um, the hood school boiler replacements a few years out, but they're you know they're they're over 20 years old now, and we do think they need to be considered for replacement. Um, the asbestos mitigation at the little school, you know, a few years out, but we like to continue that program. Everything is you know there's no danger. Everything is is safe now. Um, we just would like to 
continue and pick up that mitigation program. Um, we did have an assessment done of the Hood School roof, uh, you know, moisture analysis. Uh, you know, for the most part, things came out, came out. Um, you know, it was in relative good condition at this point in time. But the, the 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 roof is getting you know 20 plus years old. It's reaching the end of its useful life, and we think a kind of a restoration project um, would be something we'd want to consider and continue to, to look at over the next few years. Certainly, um, the the boiler project at the hood and the roof restoration project, if you know, considered down the road, we would certainly would be candidates for the accelerated repair program with the MSBA with their with their grant program. So we'd want to consider that, you know, down the road if if, if these projects um, you know, get get supported or we we feel that they're necessary as we continue to, to assess them. And then the little school modular unit, um, we just kind of wanted to put that on the radar of the committee at this point. Um, that unit is, you know, about 11, 12 years old. It, it's, it's not going to, to last forever. Um, they do have an end of it, a useful life um, in mind. Um, it's, in, it's in relatively good condition at, at the moment, but, you know, we feel in the later years of this five-year plan, uh, we need to certainly, you know, have that be mindful of, of that unit, and it's something that would be needed, so we do feel like it would need to be a kind of removal and replacement uh, at this point in time. And then sort of a, is a project we would sort of love to do, uh, although it is expensive, would be to fully upgrade the Hood and the Little School's energy management system. So it would include the entire school. Right now it only includes the boiler room, certainly this building, as well as the bachelor building. There's, there's greater controls, and that energy management system extends throughout the entire school. If we were to be able to do that at the Hood and the Little, it's much more fine-tuning. And, and regulating of the of the heating and the cooling in that building, we do feel like there would be an energy consumption savings if that were were to be able to happen as well. Um, so a request summary for this is actually I say fiscal year 20. Uh, we're in fiscal 19, but these are actually requests for next fiscal year. So I apologize for that. We actually this is fiscal year 20 request summary. Um, and the computer devices, we this is just kind of a you know a quick administrate central office administration's thoughts on pri list of priorities. We we would plan to kind of discuss this in greater detail when we ask the committee to put forward a, a vote at the next meeting. But <coughs> we feel the technology items of the computer devices would have to be considered a top priority. The little school paving project um, is the next priority. The hood and the little um, upgrades to that fire alarm, you know, systems and burger alarm systems as priority number three. Replacing the 2007 special education van as a as a priority number four. <coughs> the little HVAC upgrades as as number five, and the hood and the little lighting upgrades as number number six. We we honestly feel they're they're all great projects. They're all a need. They all have a purpose. Many would allow us to be greater, more energy efficient. Um, but you know, if we were to, to rank them, and the CIPC does ask us to rank, this is where the administrative team sort of landed at this point in time. Um, as a reminder to large capital CIPC process, we would be looking for school committee approval and support of our large capital submissions and plan um, this month of September. So you're hearing the presentation and getting the report this evening. We would discuss it in greater detail on the 24th and ask for a vote. Of support um, in the month of October, I think the CIPC has extended their deadline a little bit this year. I believe it's October 15th that the CIPC um, requests to, <coughs> to come from us to the CIPC. So that October December is the CIPC submission and department presentation uh, will take place. The ranking and approval by CIPC members typically happens in January, February, and March. And then the CIPC presentation to either the select board or board of selectmen happens in, in April. Um, and, and then town meeting approval happens in June. So thank you this evening. And then I'll just entertain any questions at this point in time. Thank you, Mike. Great, thank you. I have a few questions or comments if I can. Okay, great. You want me to come down <clears throat> first? Sure. Let me come down and we'll yeah, check. Yeah, we can go back to this. Thank you. Yes?
So I have a few questions, Michael. So one, one question is, it seems like the state's actually doing better financially than it thought it was going to be. And so some of the bigger projects include the hope to try to get funding from state or federal uh, you know, reimbursements for that. Is there any merit to trying to prioritize some of those because it might take more than one year to approve or, or to try to get that to get on the list? I'm just wondering if like the boiler replacement, if there'll be more money for those now and if in the future it's not there, should we be trying to submit those applications sooner rather than later if, if there's funding available now that might go away? Um, yeah, it's, it's certainly a good, a good thought. I think those are certainly, they're both the ones that would qualify, in, at least in the, the Mass School Building Authority's accelerated repair program, that are, would obviously be the, the hood school boilers and the, the, the roof project. And to qualify for that, for funding, is you need to have the, the project or the, the, the roof of the boilers or the windows, whatever you might be doing. It's, it's basically roof, boilers, and windows. It needs to be at least 20 years um, old or greater, and it has a value of at least uh, a quarter of a, of a million dollars, which both of these projects would, would fit into that criteria. Today or, or at the date that you have them? The date of the request. Okay, so so they're, they're, they wouldn't fit today, necessarily. Uh, um, no, I think I think they some of them are getting close. The hood school boiler, I think we, did, we I reaching twenty the twentieth year this this year. Mm -hmm. So, um, the the process is, is you submit. It's very much similar like a school building project. You submit a statement of interest, and it gets ranked among many other the requests that come in at that time. They kind of have a fixed amount of pool of money, you know, and they they rank you know the the need, um, and if supported you need to then show evidence by a certain deadline that you can have the, the local support of that project um, at, at town meeting. So I think and our approach was to sort of try to balance out the needs that we, we have some small needs, certainly in the next couple of years, as you saw. Um, but you know, have these larger projects um, you know, on there, maybe in some kind of three to five years out, so we can kind of give the you know, the CIPC in the town, the ability to sort of plan for that a little bit, because I think what typically would happen, and we saw with the Little School Roof Project, is um, it's a great process working with the, the accelerated repair and the MSBA, but it does add some overhead to it, um, as we saw. So you're going you're gonna to have to hire a project. So once you're in the pipeline and you're approved, now you got to play by their rules in, in some right. sense. So by, by doing so, they want to have some oversight. So you gotta, you got to hire a project manager and a an engineer and do, do, a, do a, a redesign, even though you have a pro and, and proposal, they want, it, they want to have their own designers that handpicked review it. So it does add overhead, does have upfront costs. So it tends to increase the cost um, by a percentage, as we saw in some of the numbers we're showing on the plan, which are basically proposals from vendors that we've worked with that are familiar with the, with the um, equipment and, and the roof that do good work and they're, they're valid proposals, but you, we're gonna see an increase so I mean, to me, I think we need to be just all on the same page and ready to be fully supported and behind before we submit, because we wouldn't want to submit, get funded, and then not have the support um, by the town to be prepared to, 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 pay, to pay for it and be part of that program. I, um, I mean, I think you still save money, but it takes longer and it's more work Yeah, yeah. for our admin. Right. Our, our you, you, wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't be able to put it in an F. FY20 anyway. Right. 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 No. Yeah. I'm just thinking, again, it was just a thought about yeah. Yeah, know, rather no, than pushing it out three years, if, that, yeah, if, if money's there now, there's no guarantee it's going to be there in the future. Um, I, I'm very concerned about taking modulars offline if they're still, and I know that's not also this year, but like if they're still working, I, I hate losing class space. And I know that. Yep. Some of the some of the people that are using some of the programs that are using the modulars right now, I think it, at least at the Hood School, are maybe even some that we can get yeah. tuition from or we're renting out. And so, correct. Are yeah, any are any of those still bonded right now? Because I know at the last town meeting, it came up about what projects we're still paying for. I would really not want to take off something that we're still so paying I, for. This is actually the last year okay. of I think all of those units in terms of their bonding. Okay. So, um, but I mean, I think. It's a valid point, and I think our, our effort and approach would be to extend the life of those units as long as possible. But you know, a couple of years ago, we recognized the fact that 
you know, these units are 12, 13, 14 years old. They do have a, an, end, an end game, an end life, you know, useful life to them. And we need to start you know, planning so we're not surprised when the day comes that. I think we're there with the I was going to say, if I recall correctly, it's 10 to 15 years on those things. Yeah, I mean, there. there's no foundation. There's no, I mean, it's like. Replace the handicapped accessibility yeah. ramp yeah. at the hood school. Mm -hmm. We've we've spent money to keep them we've been, yeah, yeah, functioning. We've, we've been, we had we replaced to the floor, the, uh, <coughs> and that's and that's not a, a great use of expenditure. No, it's not. Yeah, which I think was ultimately what happened with the school construction project of this building was we had so many modulars right. that we they we were going to we were going to be millions of dollars into replacing them. Yeah. I think we lost more than a did we demolish a dozen or so? I up think here? you're exactly maybe 14 eight yeah. at the middle school. I think in six in the high school, but yeah. Yep. Now, the other question related to that is we will be losing, um, if we did the hood modules, we'd be losing seam rental money, correct? Right. That's like yeah. you would use those, the rooms that we would need to use for the so-called hood school yeah. students would be those that we are renting out. Is that students. significant revenue? It's about $18,000. $18, yeah. So it's about 6000 It's a consideration. Yeah, it's a consideration. I mean, it certainly helps. It helps. It's an offset to the budget, you know, to the maintenance and repair and the building contractual services so it's it's a help well and especially if we just hired a a position or we just funded a position to try to look at special education and trying to keep more students in house some of those programs that could be built may need extra spaces and i, I guess I, I don't know i mean I, we can't again it doesn't make sense to spend more money than we're making on them uh, but at the same time is there any thought on replacing mm. modulars or? That would be really expensive. Really, no. I mean, if you it look at the little school that makes sense. mod, it was about, it's almost a half a million dollars. <coughs> you know, $500,000 just for that one room. So you almost, you're going you're gonna to triple that. And yeah. I think, uh, our, I think our point with the putting it here as it was last year was just to, yeah. to raise the awareness that right. you know, there is a life expectancy yeah. of these, you know, mm -hmm. and we're, 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 we're upon that, and it's to more just let people know that, you know, there may be a time, and this is not to alarm anyone, but there may be a time when we have an inspection done there and we're told, look, at this is your last year with them. And yeah, it's kind of a year-to-year year thing, and at some point we're going to get it the is. word. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. That's exactly right. It's a year-to-year -year thing. Um, I mean, in, t in terms of the ranking of the request, again, I mean, it's hard to prioritize what, what you need the most. I mean, I, I completely agree with one and two. The other ones, I mean, again, my personal one, I probably would put the spare special education van below some of the other ones, and I understand that it's always, I'm probably always going to think vehicles are less important than some of the other things, but, you know, we always talk about making sure the schools are clean and heat warmed, <coughs> and, heat and, warmed and cooled, and, mm -hmm. you know, HVAC projects, which are saying that right now one of the elementary schools is not, you know, properly cooled or heated is a concern of mine, but... I don't know. I mean, it's hard for me to prioritize amongst them, but that's the only one that stood out a little bit to me is that special education ban is above things like properly heating and cooling one of the schools, yeah. but I don't know what other people think. I think it's and lighting as well, I mean. The risk of um, <coughs> not having a, an appropriate backup or a reliable backup, um, and when, if a van goes down, you know, it, it actually would have a significant cost impact because then we'd be forced to shift um, those runs to an outside contractor, which would be significantly more expensive to do it on our own in some cases. So. Um, on the sorry, on the HVHC, um, you said the C wing has mm. like the heating; it doesn't work, or it's spotty, or doesn't it, it doesn't work to the it doesn't work at an optimum yeah. level. It could be better. It could, it, yeah, but it, it's not like they're freezing or anything. Uh, no, no, but there are days it's when it's, cold, it's, it's not functioning it's well. It's been a long enough. term. Yeah. I mean, it's not a it's not a uh, chronic yeah. thing, right. it, it, but it presents itself. Yeah. You know, if it's particularly cold, last winter was particularly cold, and then we could, yeah, it's it, it it's not good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's but it's, it's a distribution thing. Like some rooms are yeah, it's, yeah, it's we're not so yeah. we're not so sure. We think it, we've been told that some of the units are undersized, and you know, just, for the space that they're heating, but it, it's it's not good. We, we go through the same way, thing, by the way, in the central office when we're, we change the, this ranking twice, I think, yeah, we from where yeah. we are to try to give you a, you know, we're, I think like Michael said, and I, you probably all feel, like we want them all, but I think on the 24th, we're going to be asking you to, you know, to kind of make the hard decision about what is the priority ranking. This is just our kind of, you know, uh, you know our final the first r ranking to you before the actual vote, but we're certainly, you know, I think the, 
we, yeah, I, I think the one I would fight the hardest for is number one only yeah, because yeah. that's that's a pro program we're committed to. But um, beyond that, yeah, they're all. I have a question about the electronic systems one. You mentioned that was included fire controls, and yeah, I guess my question is how how serious is that? Yeah, how I serious mean, is the current situation? It's I have not addressed within the next year. year we or so we, we were alerted things. to it being on, but kind of like borrowed time. Yeah, and that was something that came to us late this summer. Late this summer, and yeah. I think Michael said it in his presentation that it was kind of a late add-on okay, to right. the list. It it concerned us enough that we felt we needed to highlight that, and I think that's why we put it at the ranking that we did. Right. Um, First time it shows up in the list, it's... it's yeah, it was, yeah, there was a comprehensive inspection by the alarm company that brought it to our attention. <coughs> it was kind of like, you know what, this this was concerning enough that we felt it had to be yeah, high on the it's, list. It's functioning, but it's it's old, and it, it you know... We would certainly... It's on the end of its, its and years, if, if it so went certainly. in it, the meantime... We'd, it we'd would be a problem, we, but we would yeah. have to address it. We would have to we'd do have it, to. but... Well, that's, what, that's sort of the question. I mean, I don't... Would that, how much would that add to the cost, and would it cause any disruption in, in the sense of? Um, I mean, the biggest. If the controls weren't working, it went down. Yeah. We, we would have to immediately fix it. Right. Yeah. And yeah. we, I would assume we might even, not even be able to have people in the building if it was. Uh, that might be the the yeah that might might be that might be possible yeah. yeah, if it's, yeah. Depending fire, upon when it happens controls. and how long the repair is, my sense is working with the company that we do work with, they we have a very good relationship with them, and they're good, and they would be responsive, but. But that it would be the kind of thing that there yeah. are parts or, you know, that might delay it. Yep. Depending on how much it costs, too, that's one of those things where you might have to go for a reserve fund. Correct. Right. Transfer Correct. Exactly. With yeah. the right. town. Right. Okay. Yeah, this was last minute. the quote. We have quotes that are about a little under $30,000 now to, if we were to do it. So our thinking was, yeah. let's let's hope to get through the next year with it, but yeah. put it high on the list of priorities. And I agree. it's high. It should be high on the list. I'm just wondering if it should be higher. <laughs> that's what I, I was worried yeah. about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, just because of its the nature of what it is, it. yeah. Um, the the grant from the state for the security and stuff would that fall underneath it? We've had that. It's a good question, Janine. We've had we had that conversation. Um, I think, given the nature of what we want to try to do, particularly at our elementary schools around schools safety and security. That money's going to get eaten up pretty quickly. I think the hundred and seventy-five thousand um, dollars. I don't know that this would fit within the kind of the spirit of what that money was intended for, because I think it was more tied to security and safety. Right. Um, I know. And that was kind. Of, excuse that me. Line item is zeroed out. Was is that part of that reason? So we we had a, before the before the state stepped in through through the efforts of Brad Jones with the um, with the money that did come our way, the hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. Going back several months ago, when we had kind of just the yeah. preliminary discussions around the FY20 capital requests, mm -hmm. we had talked about, you know what, we're going to need to put some money in. Okay. But once that money came through, we felt we were in a position to back that right. off and go with some other projects that seemed a little bit more Got feasible it. for us okay. now. Thank you. Yeah, but we wanted to still include it as it's it's still a priority and something that we're moving and we're trying to get yeah. done. It's just another through a different, different funding budget. mechanism. Yeah. I think just the one, <clears throat> if you look at history, <clears throat> we're not going to get all of these. Yeah. And if you look at the history of how much we've been approved, Correct. Right. 180 we got this year is the most we've gotten in the last five years. So you're almost looking at those. <clears throat> the last two items are, are going to be on the chopping block unless they decide to, they can decide to reprioritize too. They can, yeah. Can they've, they've done that before. Right. Uh, the other thing I'd like to mention, if I could, Madam Chairman, is about the technology money, that, that $75,000. I think it's important for the committee to, I think, be reminded of, but also as you go forward in the CIPC work, that I think we were, we were in a position to gain that $75,000 largely because we could commit to a kind of a matching contribution spending. from Correct. the town. And so I think, you know, that's why that list, that item still remains on right. the list, is because we committed to Brad Jones, quite honestly, when we met with him, Mr. Webster and yeah. I, that, you know, we, we felt we could work with the committee, the Capital Improvements Planning Committee, to secure yeah. that money still going forward. So I, unlike the technology money, excuse me, unlike the school safety and security money, the technology money, I feel, is like we have an obligation to honor that yes. with a match. Do, do you, am I saying that right? I agree, 100%. Agree? Okay. So that almost makes that a requirement. I, exactly. And therefore, at the right. top of the list, even yeah. <clears throat> 
only for the, if only for that reason. Correct. Yeah. If somebody didn't know that, then they might say, well, I thought you got the 75,000. Why does that 60 still have to be on? And that's the reason why. Yep. I, Brad distinctly said, don't, I, I wouldn't like to see next year a zero request for technology. Yes, you're technology. right. Yes, you're, you're right. right. That's exactly what he yeah, said. You're right. Yeah, absolutely because right. Because that, that would make him look bad. Correct. In terms of pushing it forward. That was going back to last October that yeah. he kind of said that, that matching contribution is, is important. On that note, though, um, you know, it doesn't mean we're going to get these grants every year, but I think it's worth, worth going back to Brad again yeah. and seeing yeah. if we can do a couple more proposals. It doesn't have to be technology and security and safety. Correct. Maybe it's be something. Maybe it's this thing at LED the Hood School, right. emergency yeah. replacement of, you know, fire yeah. panels yeah. Or, or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think it's worth looking into that. <coughs> So the idea is that on the 24th, I think we'll be looking for the committee to formally vote the prioritized projects that we would then, um, through Michael, um, submit to the CIPC by their deadline of, I think it's September 28th. They've actually extended it this year. It's October 15th. Oh, a little okay. bit more time. Okay. But, yeah. Any other questions? Mm. Right, thanks, Thank Mike. you. Thank you, Michael. Uh, Right, there are no minutes. Um, no minutes, ma uh, Madam Chairman, right. correct. Um, Mike, would you like to do the budget? Oh, yes, thank you, <coughs> Madam Chair. Um, so as a follow-up to the August 27th meeting, um, when we discussed the Performing Arts Revolving uh, Account and um, our request to formally adopt a motion to approve such revolving account for the ability to to handle the, the receipts and revenue coming in from the newly adopted user fee for this school year. Uh, it certainly created a, a, a healthy discussion on the, the use of that account and, and the receipts and the expenditures from the newly created uh, performing arts revolving funds, as well as the, the, the existing student activity accounts and sub-accounts, in particularly at the high school and the middle school for drama band related, related items. So I went back and, and certainly work, met with some of the staff, um, you know, got some feedback from, from, from auditors and, and had some conversations with my peers. And, um, you know, we, and actually, and, and you know, really looked at the Massachusetts general law, which, which govern these, these accounts, which is chapter 71, section 47, and put together a, an attempt, um, uh, you know, a table and, and a memorandum uh, to each of you that I hope brings some clarity and, and um, to, to the questions that were raised on the August 27th meeting. But the idea was that the High School Performing Arts newly created revolving fund, um, the, the receipts coming in would mainly be the participation fees or the user fees, as well as the ticket sales from the, the drama you know, and performing arts related productions. The expenditures from that revolving account would be the, the approved stipends listed in the uh, te the, the teacher's contract, um, the, the you know, set productions, props, equipment, advertising rights, all related expenses to put on that musical production, the musical the play, um, and so forth. And that balance is allowed to carry forward to the next fiscal year. The existing, any existing approved student sub-accounts, which we noted at the last meeting, the maskers, uh, no, notorious band. We felt if that student club is in existence and they are running a fundraiser, those typical, typically those fundraisers are for a special club trip uh, that they may be fundraising for to go to go here to this either this special performance down in, in Disney or a special trip, um, or they might be fundraising for a special type of equipment that's kind of above and beyond what the curriculum supports. We felt those would continue to be, it would be appropriate for those to continue to be deposited into the student activity agency account and then expended for that purpose of that fundraiser. So those, those sub-accounts would continue to exist. Uh, I think that's consistent with the, the laws and the regulations and I think the auditor and my conversations felt um, that, that, would be, that, would be, that was appropriate as well. So I think that's what this memo intends to kind of lay out and that would be, be our plan you know, moving forward this fiscal year. 
don't know if there's any that provides the clarity. Um, I know you had necessary. a lot of questions about this, but I'll just say, I just say, first of all, thank you. This is uh, really helpful. And uh, my one question is, uh, it says uh, on the, uh, under, under the student activity count, stipend payments are not permitted, which makes uh, perfect sense. Yeah. Um, what about any over, uh, any leftover set production, other production costs? Can they be funded by student account through fundraising, or in other words, if they could, they could. Yeah, as long as yes. anything, anything but stipend. Correct. Okay, that's correct. I think. Thank you, Michael, as well. Um, I mean, I, I was the one with the confusion last week, last time, so I wanted to. Well, understand this but um, so just to summarize very quickly so the performing arts fund this is not it doesn't matter how much is contributed as a result of your group you could have more members paying fees you could have more ticket sales than somebody else the expenditures don't relate to how the income comes in but with the student activity agency account if a particular group does a fundraiser that money that goes in is their money for their specific task. So it would come out to them. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. I just have one question. So the current balance in the maskers, yeah. I'm assuming that some of that money has been raised through student activities, notorious singing up in Salem, et cetera. How are you going to split that when you put it into these accounts? So the maskers, so they actually, there's a healthy balance, year-end balance in the maskers right. account that we looked at at the last meeting. There's also a smaller balance in the notorious um, account as well. So the the maskers balance that's in there now is going to be essentially, you know, slowly spent down this fiscal year. But th those funds will be spent almost entirely on the startup costs for the, so the planned production. Right. Um, and then once those <coughs> funds are, you know, are spent down, then the, the ongoing fundraisers will be what, for what that, the fundraiser, the purpose of the fundraiser. So um, the idea is that we'll slowly, that set production cost to get the, the, the musical or the play up and running will slowly transition over to the revolving so, account. So in a, in, a, in a practical sense, it may not happen actually on the books that way, but that money becomes part of the, 80, the 8801 money. Yes. For, for, each, for each group. Yes. Makes sense. Okay. All set? Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> I see some more highlighted names on the staffing list. A few more, Madam Chair. <laughs> we're closing in. So we were fully staffed for um, the school year. Um, just a, I did want to highlight for you a, a couple of last minute hires uh, since your meeting on August 27th at the um, Batchelder School. Um, Teresa Gavoge uh, is a special education paraprofessional, and Jennifer Peterson is a grade one long-term substitute teacher. Um, at the Hood School, Rebecca Moscariello has been hired as a special education teacher in the RISE program. <clears throat> and at the middle school, um, Ashley Egan is a special education paraprofessional, as is Beatrice Donko. Oh, for bids and donations. You have a few. Yes, we do. That's a good start. I will go ahead. Um, I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $2,690 from the Little School, the Little Elementary School Parents Association to support transportation costs for class field trips during the 2018 19 and 19 school year at the Little School. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And I move that the uh, school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $214.45 from the Little Elementary School Parents Association to purchase headphones for students across grades at the Little School. Second. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. And the folks at the little school have been, uh, PA have been, have been busy. I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $277.50 from the Little Elementary School Parents Association to offset transportation costs for their duck tour field trip. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. 
And finally, I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $596.81 from the North Reading High School Cheerleading Booster Club, Inc., for the purpose of purchasing new cheerleading uniforms. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Great start for the year. Yes. <laughs> Pointing out they're usually in ascending order. What's that? Order. I, said, I was just yeah. pointing out that they're usually in ascending order. There is a reason. If you really want to know, I can tell you what it was. The more expensive one came in late. <laughs> All right. It's a true story. Um, it's true, actually. The subcommittee schedule, <coughs> there's no updates at this time. I, but I have one report. Okay. Just about the thing that you and I both went to, Janine. Uh -huh. um, I just think it'd be nice to recognize that NORCAM put on a couple of informational sessions for students or parents that were interested. I know that um, Janine and I both went to the one that just happened last week and I don't know what I was expecting but there were five students there and there were four adults there in addition to Janine and I at the second one there was a few at the first one so that was good I, I mean I thank Phil Healy for um, coming and speaking with everybody and it seemed like there was some interest especially and it was nice at the end he asked why everybody was there and the students it was nice to see the students who many of them were younger students that were interested in video production editing um, and so you know, and one, one gentleman in the audience asked, you know, what the school committee would like to see, you know, broadcast. And so if there are, you know, if there are things that the school wants broadcast, it um, seems like there are some people that are interested in taping. And so maybe even put in request a couple weeks in advance or something, and they might be able to find somebody that would be interested in coming and covering it. Would it, there be a way um, to reach out to all of the clubs and find out if they would like? It would. Um, you know, I kept going back to the robotics. I thought, like, if they had someone mm -hmm. maybe doing, like, a time-lapse thing where they show them kind of starting the creation, you know, building it mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff, and then going to, like, actually maneuvering it, yep. that that might be something that would be nice to air so that, you know, the parents or... Mm -hmm. Sure, we can start to spread the word for that. that. That's a good turnout. I know in the past, so. NORCAM's tried to do these things, and they've gotten maybe two people show up. Mm -hmm. So that's a good turnout. I, I did want to ask a second question related to what Janine just mentioned about the robotics. I noticed they're promoting on Facebook to join the robotics club, but it's not mentioning the robotics club we just approved. So I'm kind of confused as to what is the intersection here. So the the... the the first robotics program is continuing. What, what I asked the committee to do was to in, essentially endorse that and, and fund a stipend for a, a liaison to the club from the district, a district employee. But is that a school club or is it just a liaison from the school working with the outside organization? Because um, it seems to me like it's not. I would say the latter, much okay. like the Science Olympiad functioned in the past, okay. you know, similar to that. So it won't be, quote, a club at the high school? Correct. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, before, before those, like if, if the robotics wanted to be taped, and one thing, like if a parent wanted a tape of something, a game or something, you know, they could get a better camera to be able to tape it as long as NORCAM can air it, and then you could get a copy as well. Yeah. So, it, you know, again, hopefully that'll encourage people to want to tape their son's soccer game. Yeah, so games that then, and everything, yeah. Yeah, on NORCAM, and they get a copy of it. Are there any limitations to doing uh, plays and, and musicals? Yeah. Probably there, there are. I mean, that would be something that have to be worked out. Those, in those things do have some licensing. I think the chorus stuff is a lot more open to, yeah, like, the, the plays, musicals. Yeah, those things are. Licensed to. Yeah. yeah. To, and yeah, and I, even, I, even I some of the sporting sense. events, especially the playoff games. Um, right. A lot of times there's, there's fees. MIAA steps right. in on the state tournament. Yeah, I can, I can start to spread the word that there's people available to do that. Yeah. So, see. They can go see Phil. So, contact. <laughs> and also, or, or can Phil. And also the word that, uh, that this is available if someone, who, parents who are involved, you know, who's, it doesn't have to be the people who just showed up at the meeting either. I mean, right. If they want to become involved. And the idea is we're going to, I think, run four more this year, correct? Four more workshops? Yes. Two series of two each? Yeah. yeah. There was a CI um, PC meeting 
last week. Oh, okay. Yeah, so they're the oh, highlights sorry, there of was. that. I know Michael There was, was yeah. I wasn't able to make yeah. it, but there mm-hmm. was. Yeah. Um, but they restructured the, the committee, you know, obviously the annual, just same people in same positions with the chair and co-chair and Clark and what have you. But um, it was really just focused on, they talked about the October 15th date. Yep. We have a meeting to talk about on the 17th. Um, of October to talk about what's been done and funded in the past and yep. looking at that and talking about it and then seeing the requests that have come in. <coughs> um, so that will be October 17th. A lot of the meeting was focused on um, the DPW director. The new DPW director came in and spoke about the roads. Um, they do a report called the VEDA report. Um, and so they handed out sort of this road conditions report and it basically showed that the towns, um, they have a rating in this beta system, and the town has gone down um, quite significantly from what was expected. Um, and they're really just going to be looking at this and making some recommendations for prioritization for some of the road paving. Um, and I think some of the issues that I've learned just from hearing comments was that They've always had funding allocated to it, but getting it done was <coughs> executing on those plans has been a difficulty, and it's time to step up and yeah. start to do that. Yeah, yeah. So um, it was it was a lot of that, and just talking yeah. through a lot of those details and um, you know the methodology around this report and what the plan was moving forward. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the Capital Improvement Clim- um, Planning Committee. Yeah. John, it's not a committee, but. I don't know if you had a report. I didn't see anything. I don't know if you want to get a, give an update on the meeting with um, the New England vote. Vocational school? Yeah, Vogue yeah. school. Yeah. Yes, it's not a committee, but I'm happy to do that. I think that'd be good. Yeah, is that okay? Yeah. Right now? So uh, what Ms. Mr. Webster is referring to is um, he planted the seed last late last spring with the vocational school, Northeast Regional Vocational School in Wakefield to see if there may be interest in helping us out with the construction of dugouts at the new softball field. So I met with um, some folks on last Wednesday at the vocational school. There is interest. They then came here on Friday, um, the teachers and the students that would work on the project, the carpentry students, to kind of get a bird's eye view on their own. And wh- where we are right now is to they're putting together a stock list for me um, that will help give us an idea of what the cost would be. So we would need to incur some cost for materials, but the labor would be um, kind of the classes, the carpentry class of students at the, um, at the vocational school. So um, there, there seemed to be pretty high interest, and I think there was an interest in getting that done this fall if, in fact, we are able to move forward with it. So um, the structures would basically be shade covers, for lack of a better term, but, you know, something that would mirror the style of the baseball dugouts without the walls. So a yeah. similar mm-hmm. similar roof line, similar design is what I conveyed to them. Um, I think, it, you know, for somebody that knows what they're doing, I think it's a pretty simple project. So, um, but I, that's, that's the update I have to date. So I'm kind of waiting on there, identifying what they need for stock, and then, you know, working with somebody, say, for example, like Moynihan Lumber and see, like, what would that ultimately cost for us to purchase? So no walls? Correct. Well, the fences are already, there's fences. They're already there. So this would just be a, a rooftop covering. Like a sun structure, basically. On, yeah. on top of the, there's an existing dugout structure. There's just no roof. Right. Mm-hmm. It has, it has right. fencing. It has fencing, but there's, yeah, so they need to, you know. And it's really to shade that right. area. Right, because the sun just beats down and on the hot, And in a hot day, you yeah. don't want the walls anyway. Right, right. exactly. You want the breeze. Right. Like, you're at, you yeah. know what? You go to the baseball yeah. games, yeah. the kids don't that. sit in the dugouts yeah. on the baseball games yeah. at yeah. the at the high school field yeah. it's too hot. It's too hot, yeah. Too soon. Oh, hope, hopefully the advanced kids will work on the home dugout and. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I made it clear that we did want to. I did make that clear, actually. Okay. Oh, that's good. Yeah, if you talk to the town engineer as I have, he's quite frustrated with that. I, I spoke with him late August because I think he thought it was going to be done, you know, midsummer. Yeah. Um, and then it was kind of getting to the start of school, and I checked back in with him again, and that was my last conversation with, with uh, the town engineer. But I think he fully expected it would be done by now, too. But it's kind of a non-answer, I know, but yeah. <laughs> it's... Okay. Um, upcoming subcommittee meetings, the policy subcommittee. Yes, we're going to work before we leave. I think before, yeah, we can pick a day tonight. Yes. Okay. 
and when they figure out when it's going to happen, it will happen in the superintendent's conference. <coughs> <laughs> the time Athlet to be announced. <laughs> Athletic subcommittee, September 18th at 1230 in the superintendent's um, room. The finance planning team. Oh, sorry. The athletic subcommittee is September 18th at 12.30. The finance planning team is September 20 at 8.15 a.m. in the superintendent's room. The substance abuse coalition, September 25th at 10 a.m. Yes. If it's 10 p.m., I ain't staying At the North Reading <laughs> um, Police Station and then the NORCAB, um, September 27th at 7 p.m at the Norncam office. Do you have anything more on? I have nothing additional tonight. Okay. okay. Oh, John. Yes, maybe um, I do. Maybe give an update on how well the batch school traffic change went. I think it'd be good to. Yeah, I did. so um, I checked in with Mr. Colleen for two days, Wednesday and Thursday, and I suffice it to say he was relatively pleased. I think there was improvement over Wednesday when, he, when I spoke to him on Thursday, but um, yeah, I, I think he's he's largely pleased with how, you know, he, I think he billed this as a pilot, but he wants to evaluate it over the course of the year. But um, I think that there's going to be a pretty large group of parents that are going to voice their opinion otherwise. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's mainly um, the safety of the walkers. So they okay. So to reduce, they won't let walkers, parents park in like the church right there where yes. they would. And, and it was to reduce foot traffic. Um, but now all the walkers are parking over by the library and walking. There's no crossing guard to cross. Um, to get to the school. Yep, to get to the school and okay. walk all the way up. And in the winter, it's going to be a massive pro problem because there's not going to be plowing through that area that they walk through. So it's making the walking or the, the traffic, it's making it worse for, for student walkers. Yeah, for yeah. walkers. Okay. And, um, and they were trying to reduce foot. So I know that that's been a huge problem only because I experienced that and I hear like all the people saying, well, we need to all come together and voice our opinions. And I think okay. we need to do it collectively. So I think that that will surface at some point. Um, and the traffic has been tough, no better than it was before, if not worse the first several days. So I'm, I just keep saying when parents say something to me, I'm like, it's just a pilot, let's see how it well, goes. Well, that was the idea, you right? Know, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, um, but and the other thing too is people have been talking about the fact that now they're like parking and waiting in residential area where before they were in Haverhill. So if you're a resident, you have this big long line coming through your your um, area instead of being down Haverhill, which is less residential. Um, so that's another thing that's. Certain. So I guess it's not working well. <laughs> so I guess that requires a meeting because the chief of police ex expressed extreme happiness with the new system. You'd have to ask, you'd have to no, ask. I'm, no, but I'm just saying that, that that's why yeah, I say it requires a meeting. And this might yeah. just be a subset of people. There might be a whole other subset. Sure, but I think, I think, no, I think well, it. I, 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 yeah, I mean, I'm sorry. I, I, was, I think it requires it a meeting. It might just be yeah, a small like a, subgroup yeah. that I'm hearing from. So it could be a whole, there could be an abundance and a majority of people that are happy with it that are driving through. And certainly if it's, uh, if there's an unintended consequence of right. creating a, a tough situation for a group of walkers. Right. Yeah. That should be addressed. He would be yeah, receptive. We need to, to just that. have a solution. His his, his idea, I think, going into it was it was a pilot. Yeah. Right. To try, so I'm I'm sure yeah. feedback will come his way. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think the issue was to try to keep the traffic off Haverhill Street, That's right? And of course, there's always going to be consequences. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In other areas, when when you do that, so. But I think the plan worked in terms of getting kids dropped off but the consequences it might be something that yeah is coming out as a, well, as a yeah. result of that which, yeah yeah but i think they're trying to ride it out you know it's only been a few days right, right? and see if there's some ride it out, or something see if we can figure right. it out right um you know if, when there's a funeral at that funeral home near the library that's going to pose a major yep. challenge yep. so sure they're probably just waiting to work it out but um hopefully you know, I'd like to see a pilot work. Yeah. Right? So yeah. Hopefully yeah. We'll work out the camp. But if not, well. Glad I brought that up, John. No, I am. John. <laughs> I am. I am. Oh, great. Oh, wait. That great, up that great success. <laughs> Just learning is a good is a success. Yes. Right? Yes. We'll, we'll, we'll gather information. All right. For future business, um, September 24th is our next school committee meeting at 6:30 here in the distance learning lab. Then on October 9th, which is a Tuesday, um, oh. at 6.30, yes, please note that it is a uh, school committee meeting here 
the distance learning lab, and then October 15th at 6.30, um, which is the pre-town meeting. So we'll meet at the um, superintendent's conference room, and then following that at 7, we'll head on down to the Performing Arts Center for the town meeting. And with that, unless somebody else has another question, comment, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you.